First there was the light bulb. Then there was the lamp. Then the speaker. And then we got the speaker lamp. No, seriously. It's a lamp that plays music. No, yeah, you heard me right. It is a lamp that actually plays music. First of all, my favorite thing about this IKEA Symphonisk, I just like the, the on off button down here. I just think that's cool. So it works through Sonos, but also AirPlay. Right now I'm, I'm streaming some copyright free music off of YouTube from my iPhone directly to this and control the volume. How does it sound? Pretty good. Um, you might say, does it sound like a lamp? And I might say, maybe, I don't know. Like what's a lamp supposed to sound like? Is this the first iteration of what a lamp is supposed to sound like? And this kind of sets the bar. If it is, then I think the bar is set at a really good point. Now we're not talking hi-fi speakers. I've got plenty of those around here. I've reviewed plenty of those. We're talking about a piece of furniture, something that allows you to live your life with a little bit less clutter. That's exactly what this thing is. And if you're wondering why I'm even reviewing it for this channel, because I'm an objective based reviewer. Well, I mean, I've got a life, I've got needs for, you know, having sound in my home. I use all sorts of different devices in my house when I am you know, doing laundry, maybe just watching TV, um, dishes, vacuuming, just the everyday stuff. And I always like to have music around. So something like this is really cool. I've actually had it set up in the corner over here while I've been producing and making videos and getting my content ready and writing up my reviews and getting all the data and all the stuff I normally do for my website and for my YouTube channel. And I've had this sitting in the background, just playing music at a pretty mellow level and it can get loud. There's no doubt about that. This is about a 13 by 13 square foot room and I should say foot squared room. And it, it gets plenty loud for that. I have an open floor plan living room that I've tried this out in, cranked it up to full max and, and it does very well there. The overall sound is really mellow. If you look at the data, which we're going to do in a minute, you can see that there is a downward slope in the in-room response, which is a good thing because generally speaking, if you have a flat in-room response, it's going to be too bright. Now keep in mind that flat in-room response is different from flat and a coat response. They are two totally separate things. And one of these days I'm going to make a video discussing that topic, but ideally you kind of want a slightly rolled off top end. And this speaker gives that to you pretty much no matter where you are in the room. It has adequate base. It doesn't have sub sub base. It doesn't have that, but it has adequate base, a little bit of punch to it. And it works quite well. Uh, plugs in like a normal lamp does. I'm going to spin it around the back. And you can see you've got a couple buttons on here for play and volume as well. And then the thing about this lamp is it actually comes with the shade as a separate piece and the base as a separate piece. The base comes in a couple of different colors. We'll talk about those. And then the shade comes in a couple of different colors and designs. It actually comes in a glass design as well. And truth be told, I actually like the glass design more, but I think it's about 20, maybe $30 more for the top piece. And I just didn't know if I wanted to spend that much on it. Now the base itself, I think is about 150 bucks if I recall correctly, because I ordered this myself, paid for it myself and all of that jazz. Nobody sent this to me or loaned it to me or anything like that. So I was trying to, to cut corners on money where I could, but I gotta say that I'm really and truly impressed by the sound that this delivers. It's, I, thought it's, I thought what it was gonna be was just super punchy bass and a lot of sparkle on the highs just to capture people's attention like a showroom floor speaker does a lot of them with that v curve to them that sounds cool on the showroom floor but when you get it into your house it it's stuck it's just terrible it's not good okay this speaker doesn't have that it's just a very neutral sound i guess that's probably the best way to describe it maybe a little bit rolled off on the highs maybe a little bit too much if you're talking about in terms of hi-fi but we're not we're talking about a piece of furniture that also allows us to play music and that's what this thing does. And it does a really good job of that too. Now I'm going to switch over and we're going to look at some of the objective data I have. I didn't capture the full set that I normally do because honestly, I think it's going to confuse people if I show you the normal standard set that I provide. 
So what I'm going to do is provide you with a more limited set of data. And we'll just talk about the basic characteristics of the sound function of this, not speaker, but lamp speaker. In terms of measurements for this speaker, assuming that it was a 360 degree speaker, meaning that sound is radiated throughout the speaker, no matter which way you are in relation to it, I spent some time trying to find where the higher frequency would be. If it was a tweeter or, you know, I didn't know if it was like a two way or if it had just a single array of uh, maybe mid ranges throughout, full ranges throughout. I, I wasn't really sure what the design of the speakers were. So I spent some time and I found that it looks to be right above the button, a few inches above it, I should say, is where there is a mid and a tweeter. Now I'm not 100% sure, but just kind of based on the data, it looks like it's something like that. And on the back side, maybe there's not drivers. So it's, it's hard to say for sure, but with that assumption, I put the reference plane for the microphone about four or so inches above the little power button for the lamp bulb. And in doing so, that's how I generate this data. Now this data is generated from the Clipple Near Field Scanner. And this is a device, a robotic device, state of the art that allows you to get anechoic data in a non-anechoic room. Now, why does that matter? Well, it takes the room out of the equation, allows you to see what exactly the speaker is doing. So if there's any flaws or anything of that nature, you're able to identify it from the speaker. You don't have to wonder, is that from the room? Is that, you know, where is the best position to be in relation to the speaker? All that stuff is taken out of the equation. You can look at the raw data and now you know. And that's exactly what I've done with this speaker. It's probably overkill for sure. I seriously doubt anybody's ever gonna measure a lamp speaker again, uh, except for maybe me, just because it's interesting, but we'll see, who knows? Maybe others may, may follow along too. But for the time being, that's what I've done for this speaker. And the data that we're about to go through is based on those measurements. Now, the first measurement set we're gonna look at is the CTA 2034 data. This has the on axis as well as a whole lot of other data sets that you might be curious about. And this helps to characterize the sound field and performance of this speaker. And in doing so, what we're looking at namely is gonna be the on axis line, which is in black. And really what you can see here is that the response above about 1K is just bouncing all over the place. And why is it doing that? Well, I can only assume that there is some kind of plastic or metal mesh grill that protects the speakers or protects the drivers inside the speaker. And therefore you've got a lot of comb filtering going on. Now, is this gonna be audible? Not so much, and I'll show you a little bit more on this later. But for now, really what I wanna focus on is the speaker is mostly omnidirectional, and I get that from the early reflections and the sound power directivity index data down here. Now, if we look at the estimated in-room response, we can see what I was talking about earlier, where you've got a downward trending line throughout the entire response. And it actually, again, leads to it having a more relaxed, more pleasing sound. And it's actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be, even with all the comb filtering effects we see going on above one kilohertz. Now, this graphic is created with Room EQ Wizard. And Room EQ Wizard has the ability to load the data from Clipple. And then I can apply different smoothing filters to it. So what I've got here in black is the raw Clipple data. And then what I've got in purple overlaid is the psychoacoustic smoothing. So it's more close to what you're likely going to hear when you listen to a speaker. I rarely do this because I rarely had the need to do something like this. But I think in this case, it helps you kind of see through the comb filtering that we've got and kind of get a better idea of what the sound signature of this particular speaker is going to be. Uh, the one thing that does stand out to me is it appears there's a pretty strong resonance around two kilohertz. If it's not a resonance, it's just an increase in overall output. If you're an audiophile, then maybe you'll say, ooh, I can detect something around two kilohertz, but most likely you're gonna be walking about the room and you're not even gonna pick that up. But what you are gonna pick up is the characterization of the mostly neutral-ish balance of the speaker. As I said, it has this trailing off high frequency response for the estimated in-room response. And there is a certain degree where maybe too much is a little bit too dull, but honestly, I didn't really get that feeling. I think it's just a good room piece, a piece of furniture to have that makes music. It's just a cool little device. This glow plot is to give you an idea of what the radiation is around the speaker horizontally. So as you walk around it, you know, if you're on axis with that tweeter level, 
And what we see here is there's a lot of red going all over the place and a lot of yellow and orange. And really, this kind of tells us that the front portion of the speaker, there is a mid-range, probably a tweeter up here because there's more, more red in the mid-range area toward the front hemisphere of the speaker and less toward the back. But for the most part, it's a reasonably omnidirectional speaker. And I say reasonably because we don't have so much red going toward the back, but there's a little bit. Vertically speaking, going out to the high frequencies out here, we can see that there's some strong yellow and some strong orange. So yes, the high frequency is falling off in SPL level, but that's where most of the SPL is on this zero degree axis, which is where I assumed that the tweeter was going to be based on my preliminary measurements. And really all this is telling us is that, yeah, if you want to hear the higher frequency portion of the speaker, you need to be sitting at about ear level with it. But you probably don't care. You're probably just walking around and hey, that's okay too. And that's it for this review. Like I said, I didn't really get hardcore into the data because I just didn't see the need. I didn't want to waste my time and I didn't want to waste your time with stuff that is not necessary for a speaker like this. Ultimately, what you want to know is, does it look nice? Can I afford it? And does it sound okay? And I think the answer to all three of those is yes. Now, certainly there's some subjectivity in each of those categories. Does it look nice? Well, they got different options, different lampshade options as well that you can try out. Personally, I would have liked to try the, the glass finish. Price-wise, it's about 189 bucks for the set as I showed assembled. So that's with the black base and the black, I can't remember what they call it, but it's like a textured, maybe it's a textile shade is what they call it. Now, the the glass shade, I think, is another 10 bucks or 20 bucks or something like that. I, I'm not 100% sure on the prices, and it may even vary by the time this video gets released, but it's somewhere in that ballpark. Now, for a lamp, yeah, it's expensive. For a lamp with a speaker built into it, maybe that's reasonable. I think we will see. We will see what IKEA does and if they continue to put out products like this, because if they don't, then that means it's too expensive, or if they drop the price, then we'll know what the what the consumer feedback was on it. But for me, I think it's probably right in that pocket of an acceptable price range, but that's really up to you to determine. As far as sound quality goes, I give it a thumbs up, maybe even two thumbs up. It's, it sounds good. It's a nice sounding speaker and I like it. It fills the room with sound. It's good to have just kind of sitting around. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cool little product. If you're interested in it, if you're willing to take the jump, I think IKEA has a pretty good return policy. Try it out. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will talk to you all later. Take care. Peace.